everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I am so happy to uh, reintroduce one of my very good friends, Tamara Klimek, here on the podcast. We had her here a couple months ago. I'm like, what is time? Because <coughs> that feels like not that long ago and also eternity. Um, welcome back. Happy Thank you. you. How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Oh, it's yeah. always a... Uh, yeah, just... Um, beautiful to sit and talk with you and actually this is a really good excuse for us to just drop deeper into topics that we love talking about so <laughs> <laughs> it's like a good excuse for us to carve out extra time and, and yeah be here together so yeah and something that we both are super passionate about is pleasure as a way of life and also another way of putting it is pleasure activism um this is something that you share a lot about through your workshops, through the spaces that you hold, through your social media, and just everything that you post or share, I'm always like, yes, girl, yes, <laughs> yes, like preach. Um, so I thought we could talk about this also because I get a lot of um, s beautiful souls reaching out to me on social media and saying, what do you mean by pleasure? Like, are you talking about sex? Like, are you saying I should have more sex? And I'm like, yeah, everyone should have more sex. If that feels good in your body. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, uh, and also, that's not, that's not what I mean. What I mean is enjoying your experience in your body all the way through your life in every moment as much as you can. So being really in tune <sighs> with what's happening in your body and allowing your body to lead on the experience. <clears throat> and I would, I'm just going to turn it over to you. And what do you, what is your definition of pleasure activism or pleasure as a way of life? I would just love to hear what you have to say about that. Sure thing. <laughs> so yeah, this is a topic that's very dear to my heart. And yeah, I think that the, best way to start to describe it for me is to talk about like why it's necessary and the reason that it's necessary is because we've grown up in a world that is very much not based on listening to our body and listening to our needs and speaking them up and communicating them and honoring our truth and honoring what's moving through us but we've grown up in a society that is override your system push through the harder you work here mm -hmm. for a second. Cool. So you can attune. It is. I, last time we did this as well, yeah, and yeah. it does help me. <laughs> I think when you first put it in, I was like, oh, I should have could have spoken up, hey? <laughs> um, so. Yes, we come from a society that is the opposite of listening to ourselves and honouring mm. our body. And... It really encourages us to, yeah, override, to switch off, to disconnect from listening so that we can do more, do more, make more, be more, prove ourselves, like, uh, yeah, be productive in this capitalist, patriarchal, hierarchical kind of world that we live in. It's almost like the more we can do, the more, we, the more valuable we are. And so... Like, yeah, people get their self-worth from how many things that I check off my to-do list today? Mm -hmm. It's like, what? That is what you're valuing is like what makes your life worth living. Mm -hmm. And I still have that muscle very strong in my system, I have to say, after many, many, oh, yeah, many, I'm many same, years. Same, same. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm joking about it because it's the same. Sorry, okay. keep going. <laughs> All good. Um, yeah, so uh, actually it's also about like the being that we were talking about this in my class this morning, like the busier I am, the more important I am, the more valuable I am. You know, this badge of honor that we mm. all often grow up with also in parts of the world where it's like I'm so busy is like something that you're proud to say because it means that you're important. Um, so, yeah, it's because of this way that we most of us have grown up which is all about pushing and overriding and not listening to ourselves that um yeah this idea of pleasure activism or pleasure as a pathway or pleasure as a way of life 
isn't about having lots and lots of sex and of course it can be and there's nothing wrong with that (laughs) at all and I am in a deep and beautiful process of deep deep self-pleasure sex uh, with myself which is incredible and definitely is a part of it because once we open ourselves up to this pathway of pleasure it also allows us to feel much more pleasure um, and connected and aliveness also in our sexuality but it's um, more so about the more the day to day, the small moments, the, de- mm. the the moments in the day. Just being able to listen and really ask the question: What mm. would feel good for me right now? Mm. What would feel good for me right now? It's it's really nothing more than that, and that is pleasure. What feels good in my body, and it could be anything like simple, like a resource, like having a glass of water, bringing something warm on having some touch from the person Mm. next to you, (laughs) bringing for me the dog, (laughs) having Afro near me. Mm. Oh my gosh, he's like a huge like pleasure and resource. Um, But it could also be, yeah, like cancelling that dinner that you have on in the evening that you really don't have the energy to go to. It could be moving the body the way Brittany is right now. (laughs) I realised my neck needed to be moved. I'm listening. I know. And... Yeah, it's it's listening to moment by moment in the body what would feel good for me right now. Um, and yeah, one of my teachers and one of our dear friends, Marnie, who has mm. also been on this podcast before, actually I'm just entering into a new year of her training again. Um, and she talked about, talks about... Um, hmm, I just lost my train of thought bringing money into this <laughs> anyway she's a uh, one of my main teachers when it comes to this topic um she's been an incredible yeah influence on on me living this lifestyle of what would feel good for me in this moment and trying to honor that as much as possible and if you if you guys haven't caught that podcast i did with her she has she started something called the somatic institute for women so it's all about it's an online uh, community and courses and journeys that she takes people on. And move it's like a whole movement of helping women to reclaim their connection to their bodies and their pleasure and their power. Like, And I'm just like, I love that all of us are here on the island and we like live here and we vibe and we're like best friends. And what is our life? Like, it's, I'm just so grateful for all of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, life here is... Um very special, very unique, and there are a lot mm. of incredibly wise, incredibly powerful, connected, kind, loving people uh, all trying to make a difference on the planet. So, yeah, when we come together, it's a pretty special place to be. Yeah, and I feel that um, I call it being on path, on mission. And for us, it's like everyone is allowed to have whatever mission or path that they are choosing. And also it's really feels home for me to have people in my reality that live on the island we are friends and we're close and we want to see each other every day even if we don't because we're all we're all busy (laughs) um (laughs) and obviously very important yeah yeah and very important yeah yeah um but just knowing that we're both we're all on the same mission of like empowering women and if also if you if i if you guys didn't catch the last podcast i did with tamara she um, is the co-leader uh, of um, a women's temple here on the island called Jade Temple. And now they're just launching their your online program as well, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll put the links in for that um, below this podcast. Which is, yeah, just empowering women, empowering all of us to connect to our bodies. And also by doing, and like this is not excluding men, you know, this is like everyone needs to connect to their bodies. Everyone has the invitation to drop in and choose what is pleasurable for them at every moment. And if everyone was doing this, the whole world would be a better place because we'd all just be happier to begin with and like not hoping that someone else fulfills us. We would be self-fulfilling our own pleasure and then everything else would be abundance on top of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there definitely would be a lot less war. Yeah, (laughs) that's for sure. (laughs) Um, I... You said the word resource, Mm -hmm. and within our language, we know what that means. I would love to hear um, for you what resource means. Like, you were like, 
grabbing a blanket could be a resource. What do I need at this moment? What resource? And like, just, you want to share about that? Sure. Yeah. So the word resources, the word resourcing is a bit of a lingo from the trauma world, from Mm -hmm. being in, yeah, the world of trauma aware, trauma informed, um, understanding how to work with the nervous system, how people can help themselves to feel safe enough to be present in the body in the present moment. And a huge part of the world of working with trauma, and most of us on the planet have some form of trauma that we are working with in our bodies. Mm. Um, A huge part of that, yeah, is, is using what we call resources. And again, resources are really just things that make me feel good things that make me feel safer, things that help me to stay here in this present moment. And yeah, it can be anything from something in the physical environment. So you could be changing something with your temperature or closing a door if there's wind or breeze or sound that's distracting or bringing in, if you like textures, some people like to have soft, fluffy things. Uh, Maybe a blanket helps you feel more safe and Mm -hmm. protected in certain moments. Obviously, it depends where you are and what you're doing. But it could be anything from an external object or thing or something in your environment that helps you feel safer and more comfortable and better, just feels better. Mm -hmm. It can also be something that you bring in, in through your imagination or visualization. It could be a person someone that's either present alive at the moment or maybe from the past it could be a place that you know that you feel safe in I have something from my childhood Mm. a place where I used to go with my dog and sit on Mm. this cliff overlooking the water over the ocean Mm. in Australia in Sydney and I would like I go to this place in my mind with my dog sitting on this cliff Mm. and it's for me a very big resource sitting there Um, it could be a, 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 a plant or something from nature or an animal like again my dog coming in my childhood dog so yeah we can bring in these almost visualizations or taking ourselves transporting ourselves to places or with people or with environments that also help us to feel safe and these resources they can help us anchor into our bodies into the present moment and feel safe to be here right now in this moment Mm, I love that yeah because I I I always like believe I visualize trauma is like when when something happens and you get so uh, feeling unsafe that it's like part of you leaves your body or like the energy like I just imagine everything is like energy moving through our bodies and you constrict and it like gets stuck somewhere in your body so it's like a disassociation or a constriction of like you're not able to let it go through and so when you have a resource it's like how can I get myself back to baseline of feeling safe so this energy can move through and or that I can stay in my body in the moment so like basically it's like how do I feel safe and we, when we when I took the trauma awareness training that we have here on the island they invited us to um, make a resource list they also call it a toolkit so like when you're in a when you're feeling good and you're feeling safe to make a list of things that you love externally internally and then when you're triggered or feeling unsafe um or disassociating whatever it is and you need to get back and also this could be just like a you can have a, like a pleasure list and then also like a re- I mean they all the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah um and i for a while i had that up on my mirror in my bathroom so like when i would feel like for me when I would feel unsafe uh, in the past I disassociated a lot so I would just like be like I'm fine I'm fine but like I wasn't emotionally in my body anymore and then I would you know probably in that in that time period go to the bathroom and then look at the list and be like oh okay I need to do one of these things you know and for me a lot of times it was like taking a bath or writing it out in my journal or singing or going to nature things that just make me connect back into my body or getting a massage you know all the yummy things. Yeah, exactly. And I think that they are interchangeable, the word resourcing or the word pleasure. Mm. And, you know, we can have our emergency kit. And this list is amazing. So things that are external, things that are internal, things that we know are really good for us when we're feeling like out of alignment or triggered or, or, or unsafe. 
just knowing what are our go-tos. And of mm. course, there's always things like breath and movement and self-touch. Like mm. our own touch can be a huge, huge resource. It's one of my go-tos. Uh, and now I don't even think about it. It just happens so automatically. <laughs> um, but it can also just be th- this same list is like just what makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. What is a pleasure? So when I want to feel like better I don't even need to be triggered or in some kind of like bad state I want to touch myself because it feels good so Mm. it's it's a pleasure list it's the same thing and many of these yeah things we don't have to wait until we're not feeling good to introduce them it's just like bringing them into our everyday life so it starts to be like what nourishes me what feels good Mm. and just becoming more habitual with doing those things and and offering ourselves those things if we are so fortunate and so privileged to be able to access them yeah, and I feel that in today's society, people usually, like, a lot of people don't know about this. Most people don't know about resourcing, like, uh, toolkits, emergency lists, whatever, pleasure, pleasure lists. And so they either shut down or they go talk to a friend. And I think that um, another thing to... I, I want to talk about self-regulation versus co-regulation, in ple- it also in pleasure. Like, we need this in our everyday life. We are designed to... I would love for to hear you talk about it if you want. Mm. Just sure, just self-regulation and mm-hmm. co-regulation, mm-hmm. and S- how it relates to the pleasure game. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess when we're talking all s- these words around like trigger trauma, there are moments when we are in our nervous system feeling dysregulated or not regulated and there are moments that we feel regulated when we feel calm our body we can breathe we can feel the sensations Mm. in our body and we can really be in this present moment experience we're not reacting to something from the past and we're not overreacting and we're like fully present in our body and the reality is that many 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 of us on the planet are functioning or have been functioning from a dysregulated state as almost baseline Um, because, yeah, I would say we didn't get the tools and learn how to regulate our nervous systems in the foundational years. So the first seven years of our life, we actually don't know how to self-regulate. We learn this through co-regulation with our caregivers, our caretakers. They are, that is their primary job, besides keeping us alive and fed and sheltered actually to help us regulate our nervous systems and regulate. So if we're overwhelmed and crying like a crying baby, actually a regulated nervous system, a parent or a caretaker that has a regulated nervous system can actually help that child, that baby regulate through their own regulated nervous system. So it's literally like their heartbeat, like just their emotional reality, the baby is like absorbing all of it. So it's not even about the parent, what they say. It's like, how do they feel in their body? Are they, do they have a calm nervous system? Because the baby or the child is just going to absorb that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And, and so those first seven years is when we're really learning that, that process of, okay, we're out of regulation and we co-regulate with someone that's around us, hopefully. <laughs> Not maybe as much as we, we, we could have um, or we should have. And then we learn the tools so that we can self-regulate. And now, as I said, most of us didn't actually get that when we were young, when we were children, because our parents weren't actually regulated, not because they were bad people, but because they also didn't get the tools and they also grew up, grew up in homes where their parents weren't regulated and it's just being passed down from generation just to generation to generation. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's why there's like a a very, very, very big pandemic on on the planet right now where there's a lot of people that are literally in this survival mode. They're in this almost stuck in survival mode. And that is this kind of being in fight or flight, um, a lot of adrenaline and then cortisol in our bodies and people that are like reactive and like it's, it's one of those things. People are very reactive with each other. Um, and just, so you, just to clarify, so you mean like specifically in an emotional standpoint, like survival, like because a lot of times people people who are listening to this, they take everything we're saying very literally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I just want to make sure they understand that like mm. most people are not going to die physically, but emotionally they have the reality that they might get kicked out of their community or they're not accepted or not loved. And your body interprets this the same way as physical danger. So it's like 
that's what I mean by like s- emotional survival, psychological survival. Your body interprets it the same as the same amount of seriousness as physical danger. And a lot of people don't realize this. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, just to sort of take it one step back and thank you for bringing that back to uh, this place is, yeah, survival mode being, yeah, life or death. And our nervous systems were first triggered by these into these responses from actual threat, like an animal or mm. something that was going to kill us. So we have all of these responses in our nervous system to protect us and help keep us alive. So either fighting because it might be the best tactic in that moment, flight, so we run away. Freeze is also like a totally valid response from our nervous system. If we were about to get eaten by a lion, that maybe as we play dead, it's like something that also happens to other animals, like still to this day. Um, It actually like makes us appear dead, but also shuts off a lot of the sensation in our body. So if we were going to get eaten, we wouldn't feel so much. Um, So this is so like deep in our nervous system from like thousands of years ago when we were actually living out in nature and animals were maybe going to attack us. Exactly. And that would happen like, I don't know how often I'm definitely not, uh, (laughs) haven't got the exact numbers, but not all day, every day. It happened every now and again, a lion might attack us as humans or some like real, real, real physical threat would happen to us. And then we would process that and we would shake it off or we would like actually allow this whole trauma response process to complete so that it wouldn't be stuck in our bodies but what's happening in modern day is there's so many things that are happening to us all the time that we are basically trapped in this what i called earlier survival mode in these trauma responses fight flight freeze and fawn is another which i won't go into right now but it means that we're constantly in this state of threat and these cycles of the um, the trauma response the cycle doesn't complete so it all gets stuck in our bodies and it actually creates for us all to be in this very deep state of tension uh, a lot of the time um, so we did a little backtrack on what I meant by survival mode Um, But what we were talking about was regulation, Mm -hmm. self-regulation and co-regulation. So as I was saying, like our parents, many of them were in this survival mode. And and, and money is a big part of this. Capitalistic society is a big part of this as well. All of us being trapped in this survival mode from a nervous system perspective. Um, But yeah, many of us didn't learn how to self-regulate. So this is one of the great things about coming into this work is learning tools for self-regulation and a lot of that can be about breath touch Mm. Mm self-touch movement yeah let's take a deep breath (laughs) (laughs) it's always a good thing (sighs) (sighs) number one tool (laughs) always take a breath but breath sound movement self-touch all amazing and then actually resources uh, as well as we've been talking about are tools for us and things for us to bring us into a more regulated state to make us feel more safe regulate our nervous systems Um, and we are social creatures so we really do rely on co-regulation a lot and it's something that many people miss out on as a really, really important part of us feeling like nourished and thriving and connected and safe on this planet is having someone around us that does have a nervous system that is regulated so that when we have something that does happen to us, takes us out of our regulated state, that someone can be there with us with Mm -hmm. this nervous system that can help co-regulate and bring us back into safety, back into this regulated place. Um... Yeah, so like when I think about self-regulation, I always think like, am I able to bring myself back into this baseline of calm, grounded, feeling safe, where I'm like open energetically to what's around me? And sometimes I get so triggered or I'm really tired. Like there's something physical or emotional that is overwhelming me and I am not able to 
bring myself into this baseline of feeling safe, calm, grounded in my body. And this is when you have people in your life. And for most of us, it's like, you know, I would say for me, it's probably like upwards of like on the island, like five people in, in the whole world, 10 people who know almost everything, like things where we were talking about before the podcast that I, most people don't know about my life, but you know about my life, you know? And this is co-regulation especially if I were to bring up stuff to you where I have not worked through it yet I am still in the emotional process and you're able to be regulated which means like you have a calm nervous system while mine is not calm and then I'm able to kind of bounce this you know unregulated like not calmness off of yours and then kind of I just imagine it like one person standing holding their ground like they're very solid vibration and the other person is like shaky you know and then just by being in each other's energy suddenly I'm more grounded when you you know what I mean and then like it goes both ways like Mm -hmm. I just so many I love us like I'm just (laughs) like there's so many things just flashed in my head of different times we've helped co-regulate each other Mm. so many good memories and like right now we have our hands on each other's legs Mm -hmm. and this when you touch each other, like your hands are, you know, through your, through your veins, you're directly connected to your heart, which is your, your, is creating, you know, the beating of your heart, the, the speed of the beating of your heart is creating a calm or a fast nervous system. It might, I don't know if I'm, these words are coming out right, but um, what I know is like when you hold hands with someone or when you're touching someone, you're, you're like, my heartbeat is going into you. And your heartbeat's going into me. And so we kind of eventually will balance each other out or like, you know, it affects each other. And this is also like when you do eye gazing with people and like li- really look people in the eye, you're actually connecting your heartbeats to each other. This is why like holding hands, giving each other hugs, like like we, if you don't know what eye gazing is, it's like literally putting like a timer on for like five minutes, putting some meditation music on and just silently looking someone you love in the eyes for five minutes this is such a good resource to Mm -hmm. calm your nervous system i would say on that though it can be for some people it can be dysregulating Mm -hmm. um just because the eye gazing or yeah eye gazing Mm -hmm. so like just to say if it doesn't feel like it's regulating for you five minutes of doing that and it actually activates your nervous system that's all also okay Mm -hmm. um particularly people who are neurodivergent it can actually be quite intense and quite dysregulating so if it's with someone that you love and you feel safe with then for sure like definitely try it out and maybe it's one minute maybe it then becomes two minutes maybe Mm. you can extend but just like dropping into presence and looking in each other's eyes and if it starts to feel like too much like closing the eyes and just taking a moment to come back to I love to say come back to home base and Mm. that is closing your eyes and being with yourself and shutting out anything from the outside home base and safety and then perhaps yeah you can uh, like re-engage in, in eye gazing just yeah just so people that's don't a feel good point because <laughs> for me it's such a resource I'm yeah. always like look me in the eye <laughs> and then I've had people be like yeah. I don't want to and I'm yeah. like but I'm so safe <laughs> yeah and people come to this island and they're like what's with all the staring in the eyes <laughs> <sighs> uh, I would love to hear so now that we said a lot of things that were very mm. letting people like up upgrading them on like the terms and everything yeah yeah I, w- I would love to hear like what um brings pleasure to your body like what are what is like right now in your timeline in tomorrow's life what is making you feel juicy in your body <laughs> everything all day every day <laughs> <laughs> mostly of <laughs> course there is a reality where I'm also very busy and sometimes I'm pushing a little bit um past but you know just to talk through like um yeah, a lot of the things in my day. So I will start with meditation most mm-hmm. mornings um, and some kind of movement. I have a movement-based start to my day and it could be yoga, it could be walking on the beach, could be swimming in the ocean, um, could be a personal training session. But for me, movement, like starting my day with meditation and movement are really key. Mm. Um, food and coffee is one of my greatest pleasures yeah. and I have... <laughs> like zero shame about that it's like i'm so we're so lucky to live here and have Mm -hmm. so much amazing healthy delicious food around us but food for me is such a huge pleasure and i love love like i sometimes i go to sleep and i'm like already like oh my god i'm so excited for breakfast (laughs) 
so You're excited so to cute. have my coffee and my <laughs> my acai bowl. <laughs> oh, I love that. And I do. I actually go to sleep and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so excited for my day tomorrow. Like, oh my god, it's going to be so amazing because everything that I do actually does bring me a lot of pleasure. My work brings me a lot of pleasure. I had a class this morning. I had 27 women sitting in a circle offering themselves self-touch and uh, the theme we were working with was slowness, slowing down mm -hmm. and softening. Um, and we were, yeah, sitting in a circle and, and, and connecting with our own bodies. And for me, it's like so pleasurable to mm. hold this space. I also am there giving myself breast massage with, with the women in the circle and not nurturing and nourishing my body with touch and presence. And what else brings, I mean, everything brings me pleasure. Um, <laughs> nature is like by far yeah, one of my greatest definitely. pleasures and greatest resources and... Yeah, I'm definitely in nature every day, some in some way, shape, or form, even if it's for 10 minutes with my feet on the sand. Um, yeah, animals, touch, touch, touch. Touch is my number one love language. Touch is mm. my number one resource. Um, yeah, massage, again, something so lucky about living in Thailand. I have my Thai sister and my Thai mama who, like, just... Oh. <sighs> <laughs> I want to get their contact. Yeah, you I need to. It's <laughs> like, oh my god, you're always talking about mm -hmm. them. Yeah, yeah, I love them both so much. And I, <laughs> on the weekend, I mean, I have a little bit of physical pain in my body right now, actually, in my hips. So I had a massage on Saturday mm. and Sunday, um, and I was like, I just love the different energies that they bring to their touch. Um, what else? Like anything in the senses, like pleasure is in the senses. And I spoke about this last time we were on the podcast mm -hmm. together and I talk about it a lot, but I always say we're like a soul that gets dropped into this pleasure suit. Mm -hmm. And most oh, of us, <laughs> pleasure suit. And most of us like don't realize that we are in these literal human suits of pleasure. Mm. And that's everything from the sight to the smell, to the taste, to the touch. Mm. Um, to the music oh, oh like my gosh my music. god you know <laughs> orgasms in my ears right and my we can expand any of those pleasures from any of those senses into orgasm in the body actually mm -hmm. like we can breathe with it expand it and actually turn that into to orgasm my hips are <laughs> gyrating right now <laughs> as, as we I sit think here. <laughs> and like mm -hmm. this is going to a different sort of conversation than just like pleasure as, as, as everyday life but this is what it becomes like when you focus on this when you focus on what feels mm. good and doing what feels good and expanding it then actually yeah listening to music and having a coffee in the morning can be an orgasmic experience orgasm doesn't need to be some big peak moment that only happens in sexuality with genitals like banging against each other it can actually be <laughs> sounds so <laughs> gross when it you is it's like, like banging most <laughs> sex to be honest I know, I is know, I totally not agree. so sexy to me it's it funny like <laughs> banging. what do you think afro afro's like i maybe want to go to the beach <laughs> so um, but i do want to can we talk about your self-pleasure we can go there. I would, sure. I would <laughs> love to go there. I feel like it would be very inspiring for mm. a lot of women. Because mm -hmm. um, you have talked to me about it and I was just getting turned on just hearing about it. So anything mm -hmm. you would like to share about your self-pleasure ritual? Mm. I'm going to let Afro out. Once okay. Again. So, yeah, I as as we've been talking about on this podcast already like pleasure for me is a, is a pathway it's a it's a way that I choose to live my life and and I have to say I did it's because I spent a lot of my life completely ignoring any boundaries overworking myself having no um yeah basically l like lived in a state of stress and overgiving and people pleasing um but moving into specifically pleasure and self-pleasure I um have a very very deep I would say practice um <laughs> I actually I remember having a couple at my house once and they were like you know what's your and I said my practice now isn't yoga sitting on my yoga mat my pl my practice <laughs> like that I actually tell myself that I must do for yeah, my yeah. job <laughs> is masturbating which I don't actually use that word but uh, it makes it easier to understand sometimes mm -hmm. but self-pleasure and I go into ceremony with myself um, and not always, sometimes I want a quick release and I'm just like, don't want to shame any type of self-pleasure or what it looks like for you. 
Um, and for me, I've been, uh, I guess, fortunate enough to be able to go into a very deep process with, with self-pleasure where I do create ceremony and ritual. So I will put on music, I will put on incense. I, I've got my pleasure ritual playlist. I love that. If you want to go to my Spotify, I highly recommend it. <laughs> it's amazing. We'll put the link <laughs> down below. <laughs> Everyone, please yeah. follow. Um, and yeah, yeah, I set the scene. I turn, I change the lighting in my bedroom and I you know, go into a ceremony with my body. And it may end up being sexual self-pleasure. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'll actually share. It was my birthday like 10 days ago. And on the evening of my birthday, I was like, oh, I'm going to go into like this big self-pleasure ceremony and I'm going to end up squirting and being like in a <laughs> full goddess ritual with myself. <laughs> and I started my, my, my self-pleasure connecting to myself, just being with my body and actually, just like in a relationship with another human, I could just feel my body. She was like, I don't want sexuality. That's not what I want right now. I just want to be held, like have cuddles and just like be in the bed and just like swim in the gratitude for this day. And I just want to be held and soft and... Wait, just to clarify, there was a man in your bed. No, this is just with me. What ah, you okay, okay. Like that's, <laughs> I got confused. I got confused. I wanted to make Sorry. sure I understood. This is me with myself. Okay, Self-pleasure. Just you with are me. making love with yourself, girl. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, when I, going back to, to, my, to my sort of practice in general rather than my birthday, um, is, yeah, often setting the scene and then like really exploring what, I want, my body wants, desires in that moment. And I really have, I, I seem to be unlocking deeper and deeper and deeper over the months and over the years, this place of making love to myself. So. <laughs> I just keep smiling. I love it. I love everything you're saying. It's, um, yeah, I guess it started off before, you know, like a quick orgasm and clitoral orgasm and sort of like the same way that many, many people sort of self-pleasure or, or masturbate but then I started to take this into like just being in connection and y like being in loving presence with my own body and and actually exploring like what do I want right now and, and like I said sometimes it's sexuality and sometimes it's not and if it does move into sexuality which is for me you know really like being much more with sexual energy and genitals and like really like Again, I try not to have orgasm as a goal, but if that's kind of more present in terms of the climax energy that's in my body, um, like something has yeah tapped in very deep within me to make love to myself like I would the greatest lover of my life. And I'm actually in that state like I have been, like and I, the person that I think of is my ex-husband when we were, you know, falling in love and pouring, like, and you're making love and you're so present with each other and you are just, like, enjoying, the pl like, every single touch and every single penetration and every single part and point of contact and you are, like, you're loving deeply this human that's with you and, and being able to tap into that energy with yourself is, I believe, like... Deeply, deeply, deeply healing. <laughs> we have a little kitty cat. The kitty's morning. trying to come in. Deeply healing. And for me, it's, uh, it's opening access to the deepest pleasure and the deepest, different, most different types of orgasms I've ever experienced in my life. Um, and yeah, it's just a deep ritual with self. It's like the greatest, it's, li it's like, it's just making love with yourself. Right, that is exactly what it is. It's making love with yourself through pleasure with your own body. Um, I probably am speaking for a lot of people here when I ask this question. Do you teach this? Because <laughs> everyone, like I know, I can feel people who are listening are like, I want to know exactly what she's talking about. Can someone please give me the instruction manual? <laughs> <laughs> I do teach this. <laughs> you can visit my website. Um, so, yeah, I, I do teach this. And, 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 you know, actually this all, c this of course we move into like uh, self-pleasure in terms of like orgasms and um, working internally with your own body. Um, but it actually just starts, if you start at the very, very basics, it's actually like you can start with just connecting to your body, with just learning to touch your body in a way that feels pleasurable before even moving into anything that includes sexual touch. 
and just starting to build this relationship, this connection with yourself and your body. And I say it often in my classes, this is the only relationship you will have from your first to your last breath. The only relationship that is with you every single day, every single moment of your entire life is you and your body. And I always ask, how, how, how is that relationship? Is it abusive? Mm. Is it judgmental? Is it critical? Is it loving and kind and supportive? Like this is a relationship between you and your body and yeah it's like so empowering to be the one that's in charge of our pleasure Mm -hmm. because in today's society we're programmed to give that away to our partner or just or just lock it down you know like just don't have it Mm -hmm. um exactly and you know it's uh, like i'm single now uh, and 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 i i'm having the best sex of my life for sure, with myself. I'm not having sex with anyone else. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't had sex with anyone else for a very long time. I think it might be disappointing when I do. Um, Just joking. (laughs) A little bit joking, a little bit not. Um, But, like, I feel alive. I feel vibrant. I feel sexual. I feel sexy. I feel juicy. I feel, you know, like, what you see sometimes when people are in new relationship energy and they're having a lot of sex and you're like, hey, girl, I can see it. You're, like, glowing. Like, it's like we can give that to ourselves. We don't need to wait for someone else to come to have that juicy, sexy, beautiful, sexy love life that makes us feel alive and... um Yeah, when I think about it, it's like when I make love with myself, I'm... It's the deepest form of, like, meditation, yoga. All these things are helping us to connect to source, God, whatever you want to call it, our soul, the bigger part of ourselves that is not physical. And for me, when I do self-pleasure, masturbate, whatever you want to call it, that is literally what I'm doing. It is a spiritual experience, and it has nothing necessarily to do with what physically is happening. Uh, A lot of it is the energy that I bring, the presence that I bring. I can't tell you how many times I thought, oh, I'm going to, like, physically self-pleasure myself, and then I checked in with what my womb wanted and my yoni wanted, and it just wanted a hand just wanted a hand over my yoni Mm -hmm. just like I just wanted some presence I'm here I'm with you and I I remember the first couple times I really was with myself in that moment and wasn't pushing myself to do orgasm or you know like physically stimulating myself I just started crying because so much of us women it's like we are programmed through porn of like get to the goal and women's pleasure is like when you release the goal, when you just are like, I'm just here. Because when you allow yourself to just be, you open your up like a flower. It's just like blooming like endlessly and there's like endless amounts of pleasure. And it starts with letting go of any expectation of anything happening. Totally. And this endless amount of pleasure is really, 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 really true. I'm like continually like learning and evolving and finding new things and unlocking new types of pleasure in my mm. body. And I think that there's like two things I just want to say about that. One is as as a woman learning this, like if you would like to have better sex in general, then this is the way to do it. You need to be with yourself and your own body and the safety of your own body and being listening to your own body and offering that touch in whatever way that looks like that pleasure so that you can then teach other people how Mm -hmm. to explore your body how can a man ever guess (laughs) and understand what it would be like to pleasure you if you don't know how to pleasure yourself and that also comes down to what you just said like saying no like when your body is like actually I don't want to be penetrated right Mm -hmm. now I just want to be held I don't want to have an orgasm I just want softness and tenderness so Mm -hmm. to be able to listen to that from yourself offer that to yourself then next time that's happening with a partner, you can say to them, actually, I just want to be held today instead of what most of us have done most of our lives is feel like we should allow ourselves to be penetrated or be there to have sexuality because someone else wants to have it. Mm -hmm. So when we can start to like A, honour our own needs and our own yes and our own no and know what feels good in our body, then we can take that to a partner and that's when our sex with someone else can become mind-blowing as well. Yeah, and we're so many women, I say this all the time at the beginning of the play parties, is like, as women, we're programmed to just like lay there and just be silent and hope the guy can read our mind, hope he does something that brings us pleasure. And if he doesn't, we just keep laying there. And I'm like, fuck that. Like, imagine if you go into the situation with the man, the woman, whoever you're connecting with, 
and you say, here's my manual of what I know currently brings me pleasure. I would love to share this with you. And then I would love to explore yours. And then I would love to figure out if there's something we can co-create that we both don't know about. Like, let's go into this as like little kids excited to play, you know? Totally. But you're not expecting anyone to fulfill you. And I, I have, I feel like we all have, I've had this where I'm like, I'm waiting for my Tantra lover to like <laughs> open me up. <laughs> and it's like, no, we are meant to do this ourselves. This is, this is the age of women stepping in their own power and taking this back and the huge part of that is our pleasure like we are here i feel to be the the leaders on the pleasure m movement women women we have we, to be we have to be yeah 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 and and that actually the the, the other reason i think that this self-pleasure movement for women is so so important is you know you know i observe in in relationships even in myself in my own marriage you know when we get into relationship and we give all of our pleasure and orgasms like responsibility to our partner, we also like often give our power away to mm -hmm. our partner. So, so many women say to me, I know how to be powerful when I'm single, but somehow when I'm in relationship, I'm giving all my power to my partner and I become this like less powerful being. And for me, I really, really, really believe that one of the keys for women to stay in their power in relationship as well and not be giving their power away to their partner is to give themselves their own pleasure and their own orgasms. I really, mm -hmm. really, really feel like this is one of the keys for us as we move into this next season of life here on this planet. Yeah, like that's your baseline and then everything else is like extra mm -hmm. fun stuff on top, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly, exactly. Um, I wanted to ask you, have you ever heard of or read this book, the Mary Magdalene Manuscript? I haven't read it, but I've heard of it, yeah. It's been recommended to me for like years and I finally feel ready to read it. I don't know. There was some resistance or I was like, I don't know. It's always on my, my book list. And I just started reading it last week. And oh my goodness, this thing is really, really good. And it's already started to shift. Uh, it's basically sh in the book, they talk about uh, very specific things that they did um, in Egyptian times, like the high priestesses women who were like trained in the art of sexuality, manifesting energy work. Mm -hmm. And you can choose whether you want to believe if the book was channeled or not by the actual Mary Magdalene or not. But like the exercise, she gives like very specific energy exercises to do when you're, when you're physically moving through an energy orgasm with yourself or with a partner. And I've been practicing these and I was just doing like some of the breath work and energy and I was like getting like a full Kundalini rising in my body and like orgasm. And I was like, okay. And then today I, I practiced it with Faraday and I even was like, okay, when you orgasm, imagine it filling your energetic body. Don't let it go out and just like go everywhere. Like keep it with it. And like we were like doing it together and I could feel and see like in my, you know, mind's eye, like Wow, it's a lot. It was really, I very <laughs> recommend it. I'll be having a read. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just mindful that it is getting sunset time mm -hmm. and we are, this is our church is going to the beach at sunset mm -hmm. in the morning. Um, uh, is there any last words you would like to share? I love our podcast together. I feel like the middle part was like very like technical, like letting people know the terms. I think it's really important for people to understand like the baseline of trauma awareness so they can understand how to let pleasure in and also my favorite part is when we're just like talking about like all the fun things you know <laughs> the juicy stuff <laughs> the juicy stuff yeah yeah is there any, anything else you want to share um yeah just to say that this pleasure as a pathway is a rebellion it is activism it is us fighting against these systems of oppression that all of us have been living under the systems of patriarchy and the systems of capitalism. And we, yeah, it is a reclamation. It really is a form of activism to say, I'm not gonna live like that anymore. I'm not going to cross all of my own boundaries and push and push to do and do and do and do. Actually, we didn't talk much about rest, but rest is such mm -hmm. a big part of this pathway of being in pleasure of like, listening, slowing down, allowing ourselves to mm. rest, to breathe, to just be, to not have to be producing and doing all mm -hmm. the time and listening to what feels good for us in the moment. And yeah, it's a practice and it doesn't happen overnight and it takes at small steps and just bringing it in. Um, yeah, I don't know if now's a good time. I will sh just share, like, yeah, I ha we, have a, we have a free 10-day mini course which launched last week um, at thejadetemple.com. 
um, I'll share, we'll put it in the show notes, mm-hmm. but there's a, we've got a free 10-day mini course, which is actually really like starting to um, give you a daily, daily like five-minute video and a five-minute practice of mm. some of the tools that really help you start to connect to your female body. This I'm is so for happy women. you guys did the online stuff because <laughs> yeah. so many women were like, I can't come to Copenhagen, but I want to know these things. So totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then in a few weeks we're launching a membership which mm. will be giving like daily inspiration for like small ways to become more connected to your body, to give you little tools, five-minute breast massage, go and hug a tree for five minutes, <laughs> drink your coffee with your five senses, little moments to remind you day by day to come back more into the body and pleasure as a pathway, as well as weekly classes which will be live taught pleasure classes, embodiment classes, mm. women's circles, so it's community, it's daily practices, and it's so those longer happy classes. You're doing this. <laughs> this is like the world needs this. Yeah, yeah, we need yeah. this as a collective. It really is. You know, in my class this morning, there was like a, 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 many w- women were there for the first time, and they were like, "Every woman needs this," and I'm like, "They're gonna have access soon." Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have yeah different price points to try and accommodate different economic situations and. Yeah, l- uh, we we want this work to to reach far and wide. So it's a movement. It is a movement. It absolutely is a movement. And I can tell you, having come from very, very, very far away from where I am now, from the corporate pushing, uh, like really, really disconnected, numbing with a lot of alcohol, a lot of drugs, a lot Mm. of cigarettes, like everything. It's like if I can be here, (laughs) then you can be here too. It really is a choice, a practice, and just saying, you know, like enough, enough. It's like time to come home, time to come mm. home to these bodies and listen to ourselves and honor ourselves. And yeah. So beautiful. I love everything that you say. I'm just like, <laughs> preach, girl. Like, I don't need to say anything. Like, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, yeah. I thank you so much for coming on the show. And mm. I just, I, I feel like also what we need is just to keep reminding each other that this is okay because we're literally in a world where it's telling us the opposite that all of your pleasure comes from the outside that you need to do more to be worthy of that pleasure and you need to buy it and you need and so we're just here telling each other and telling all of you no it's the it's inside of you take back your sovereignty take back your power and also you can be in community with this you can we can do this together we can make a statement in the world in our own way that feels safe and yummy in our bodies so <sighs> and on that note i want to take afro to the beach <laughs> i'm gonna swim for a little bit okay i love you love Thank you, you too coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know i wanted to just like consume all of <laughs> that you was a slightly <laughs> awkward hug but we love each other <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to put everything in the notes, your in, your social, everything we talked about. So check it out. Follow Tamara, follow Jade Temple. And yeah, send you guys all lots of love and see you in the next episode. Mwah. Thanks.